Thanks, darling. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. And um, I should have said we're on Ninja. Um, you, you may or may not have realized that, but anyway, we are on Ninja. I'm on Ninja Trader. I've also got uh, Trading View up as well. I want to just show you very quickly the uh, the one day and the um, the VIX as well. So, but this is uh, we're coming to the end now. We're three or four minutes from the close of the U.S. session. Um, I've just got one stock. I've just picked uh, Nvidia because it's been moving. Um, there's been dramatic price action on it. And certainly, David asked the question from an intraday perspective in terms of volume price analysis. Absolutely. As I said in the reply, um, I've got the 15 second chart up here. I've got the one minute, the three minute, and then down the bottom, I've got five, 10, and 15. So this is very much uh, an, an intraday. It's very much a day trader's um, time frame, if you like. And volume applies. In fact, everything that we talk about, whether it's volume itself, the VPA methodology, whether we are talking about support and resistance, whether we're talking about accumulation distribution, whether we are talking about the VPOC, everything applies irrespective of the time frame. So it doesn't matter whether you're looking at a one minute chart or a one month chart. The principles of, of what we explain, what we teach, what we use ourselves is identical. And it doesn't matter whether it's an indicator or whether it's the application of volume price analysis. I mean, I'll tell you a, a, a very quick story that when Anna and I were learning, um, some of, I'm sure some of you will know our history, but we learned in London, just down the road from the Liffey building where the futures were traded, where we started. And in that introduction, one of the things that we were taught and was explained to us was the cycle, a market cycle, and the time frame that this market cycle was described in by Albert, bless his heart, was over 10 years. And some of us were left with the impression that you only got to trade once every 10 year cycle, which is funny, it's laughable, it's, it's, it's a crazy idea, but... You know, we had to, and we didn't like to ask. So, of course, but then eventually you do, or somebody asked anyway. Um, and as I always say, there's, there's no, there's, there is no such thing as a stupid question. The question, the stupid question is the one you don't ask. Um, so, you know, that it, I just make the point that when you talk about cycles, when you talk about accumulation distribution that we do a lot, you will see accumulation and distribution take place on a one minute chart. It will happen maybe over a 15 minute cycle. So you will see the peak, you will see the decline, the trough, the accumulation, and the recovery. As I say, that, that whole cycle will take effect over a very short time window because you're on a fast time frame chart. If you go to an hourly chart, for example, that whole process, that whole cycle from start to finish accumulation up into a trend a peak at the top distribution, come back down again, complete the cycle, that might take, who knows, two, three, four days, maybe a week, don't know. When you go to the daily time frame, you are then looking at a cycle which might last weeks. It could last months. And when you go to the monthly, you're looking at years. And that's how it works. And it's the same principle for volume. It really doesn't matter what time frame you're looking at. And that is the beauty of volume price analysis. And it also doesn't matter what instrument you're looking at because the ticker in the top left corner is irrelevant. Of course, you have to know what contract size and, and all the rest of it, what you're trading physically. But in terms of the concepts that apply, it doesn't matter. It's a chart with volume and price, and you can apply the methodology in exactly the same way. I've got 15 seconds up here. I use the 15 second a lot. I'm not advocating that you have to use it or would suggest you do if, you, if you're not highly experienced. I find it useful. The one application of fast charts, I think, which is very valid, is if you're learning volume price analysis, then find a fast chart and teach yourself on a fast chart because you see all the same signals, but they come in so much more quickly. And it's a great way to learn. When Anna and I started learning, we had to, we didn't have all this. We, we didn't have the internet for goodness sake. 
we had a huge great uh, satellite that was attached to the side of the house to, to, for, the, for our live uh, data feed. Half the time when we got clouds, it would break. Um, and we then had to place orders by phone. There was no internet, there was no online trading. It just didn't exist. So this is a fabulous world of opportunity. Uh, it's and it, I can't tell you how how what a difference it is to be able to sit here as opposed to what we used to do 20, 25 years ago. It's just like chalk and cheese. This is a very classic setup for, um, uh, as I say, for day trading. I've got this stock on here. What I've also got on here, I've got a couple of indicators on here. This is tick speed. This is a tick speedometer. Now we use this in one of two different ways. What it shows you is activity in terms of the these white cat. In fact, let me pull this up full size. Let's do it on a one minute. It's probably a bit less. There we go. Let's move the chat out of the way. Move that down the side there. The white here. Normally, I have the volume much more uh, demonstrable, but um, I don't don't want to put it on here to clutter the the screen for you. But the volume here, these white bars, the volume bars, uh, they will be red and green and exactly the same size, but just in a separate window if you like below but i didn't want to cluster the screen out because it squashes everything up too much so they appear on the tick speedometer now what the tick speedometer does is two things or well, several things actually first of all it, it it punctuates with these different colors and what the colors are telling you is where you've got relatively low volume activity in other words the red areas where you've got what be, could be considered average in other words what we expect to see for this particular time frame in this particular time of day and then you've got the green, which is punctuated with the high volume and really telling you there's a there's a, a warning, a signal. You've got volume coming in. You've got high activity coming in. So consider it in the context of the candles. And it just gives you this visual picture of the volume, if you like, as we trade throughout the session. What we're looking for, ideally, of course, is we're looking for orange and green because we don't particularly want to be trading. You know, when it goes into red, for example, in here, we're into congestion. The tick speedometer goes red, red, then we get it punctuated with a green, a nice wide high volume here. We've got a nice wide candle pushing up, pushing away, and that's price and volume in agreement, confirming that we're moving away from that short congestion phase, which was signaled with the red. So you get that punctuated across that particular time frame. So it's, a, it's an application of the tick speedometer. The second application of it is up here on the top left. Not only does it tell you the, the speed here, we're slowing up, we're speeding down. It tells you whether you know, we're running at, at average at the moment, but it also gives you the optimum ticks because if you want to trade intraday with tick charts, which are very different because they are non-time dependent, and if you've never traded on a tick chart, it's the same principle as a Renko. In other words, time has no meaning in the sense that if you had a tick chart here, which was set at, let's take the lower figure here of 610. So if you had a tick chart for this particular stock set at 610 ticks, then every time 610 ticks go through the market, the candle will close and it will go on to the next one. Now, what that means is that the time that that takes is different for each candle. It could be nanoseconds, microseconds, seconds, or even longer because the candle is not closing based on a time metric. It's closing based on a tick number metric. And what that means is that you then see momentum in the chart because what you see in a non-time based chart like a tick chart or a Renko chart is raw momentum. So the chart itself will actually speed up and slow down. It's like the, well, I've used lots of um, analogies, descriptions over the years, but if you imagine an old fashioned bellows expanding and contracting with the air uh, coming in and then being forced out, um, or even the lungs as we breathe, you breathe in and you breathe out, constant contraction and expansion, that's what you see on a tick chart and on a Renko, you see that speeding up and slowing down momentum. You never see that on a time-based chart because a time-based chart has a fixed period at which point the candle closes. So trying to find the correct tick setting for a particular instrument in a particular part of the trading session is most traders just guess because they don't know. 
And if I showed you all the ticks across all the various stocks and all the various indices, I can tell you for a fact, if you looked at ticks on indices, for example, from the YM to the ES, if you looked at it on a minute chart, it would vary between a few hundred on the YM up to several thousand on the ES because the ES is so heavily traded. So if you want to trade in harmony with that particular instrument, you've got to know what the ticks are. And that's what the tick speedometer does. It delivers that optimal setting. The reason there are two, and you can see it here, is because this is the actual, if you like, where it says optimum. So these are going through, literally changing. And you wouldn't want to be changing your tick charts every, literally every few seconds here. So we developed this to actually make it more stable and choose a number that's relatively close to the actual and then you don't have to change your tick charts quite so frequently. Obviously, we're on one minute here, so this is going to change pretty frequently. But even so, you don't want to be changing every second or two. So that's the reason there are two numbers there, just to. And the way we use it and the way I like to use it is if I'm trading, for example, in where the where Globex is traded, if I'm trading an index and I'm trading on the exchange as well, then I will use the nearest FIB number for that because it will change very frequently. If I'm trading the index non-exchange, in other words, just when Globex is running outside of the physical exchange, where volatility is much lower, then I'll tend to use the optimum ticks and take a value off there. There we are, just pop that back. So this is a very typical layout. And again, it reinforces the point that we use multiple time frames, whatever we're doing. And the reason I say it's so important, if we pop down here onto 15 minute, you think, well, why is the stock trading sideways well it's trading sideways because we're trading at the volume point of control on the 15 minute time horizon and going back to what i was saying earlier on in terms of time horizons the slower the time frame the more significance that will carry whether it's in terms of volume or whether it's in terms of an indicator whether it's in terms of support and resistance so the reason the stock has stalled right now and run out of puff is because it's sitting at the VPOC on 15 minutes. Now, if you go, I, I haven't got further time frames, but if you went out to the hourly or the four hour or the daily, you might have found the same thing there. And that's why within your chosen time frame of reference for your trading, you need to have these things laid out very clearly because they all give you those pieces of the jigsaw puzzle which help you understand why the price action is, why is my price action stalled? Why is this stock not moving? What's happened? And then you look at other things. You look at the volume here, for example, and then I'll pass back to Anna. You've got this very nice trend here rising nicely. We move through these low volume nodes on the VPOC, which act as support resistance themselves because volume acts in the same way as price does. I haven't got the accumulation distribution on here, but if I did have, that's what you would see. In fact, I have got it on there. I beg your pardon. It actually works in the same way. So when you get to these low volume areas, you expect to see price moving through that. That's a nice thing to see. If, you, if you've joined this trend and you want to see a continuation, you're seeing a low volume node, you think, great, happy days. It should move through there fairly quickly. And then we move on up and we hit the VPOC up at the top here. Why is the VPOC here? It's because this volume here is greater than the volume down here. Now, it may well have been down here at that point. I don't know. Can't remember. But now we're sat at the VPOC up here. In terms of this trend, we've got a nice trend higher. Very nice. Thank you very much. But look at the volume. The volume is falling away. What does that tell you? Volume and price are in disagreement. Why? Because we've got a rising trend on falling volume. And that's anomalous because what we want to see is rising volume with a rising trend. But we've actually got the volume falling away. Now, bear in mind, overlaying that is the fact that we are starting to come towards the end of the session. So you always have to consider where you are in the session in the context of volume in the same way we do with seasonality when we're looking at holiday periods we're in christmas for example volume starts to decline around the 10th 11th of december because everyone's winding down and partying and all the rest of it and it really only starts to pick up in the first week in january again similarly when you've got high days and holidays easter what have you the volume will fall away naturally and in the summer you will see a general decline in volume of course so you always have to put it in context. But it's just a nice example. And then when you get to the top, you get this, this weakness signal. You get this nice little shooting star candle. You've, it's preceded with a doji candle. You've got weakness coming in. 
and then you start to see a little bit of reversal. Maybe not it's going to reverse very far because the volume there is also falling away. So that's anomalous too because you've got falling volume, falling price. Again, it's anomalous. You need to see volume rising in a falling market. Just wanted to highlight that and really just hammer home the whole concept of volume and also the, the concepts of using the tick speedometer when you're day trading stocks, what it can do for you and the concepts of time and using multiple time frames to really help you answer those questions as to why has that volume done that? Why has the price done that? And really fill in the the picture that we're trying to create all the time with these puzzle pieces that we have to find and pop them into place. You are creating a jigsaw puzzle. You're looking for the pieces. You don't have the cover on the box. You have to find the pieces yourself. That's what this business is all about. And it's using every tool that you have available to help you in that respect. I'm going to pass back to Anna at that point. So I'll switch off and pass back.